Today, we are at Raytheon's massive radar development facility here in Andover, Massachusetts. Inside these walls, some of the most talented engineers in the world are working on technology that allows the U.S. Navy to intercept enemy missiles long before they reach their intended targets. I know, it sounds crazy, and it is. But today, we were given special permission to head inside for a behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to produce one of the most sophisticated radars in the world. This is the SPY-6 radar. In fact, it's manufactured inside this 1.7 million square foot facility. Inside these array of cubes is technology that allows the US Navy to detect, track, and intercept enemy missiles at distances of hundreds of miles away. Being the world's greatest Navy doesn't come without a target on your back. And what these radars bring to the battlefield does more than level the playing field. It completely changes it. Today, we're gonna to learn all about what it takes to produce such a vital piece of technology. But before we get there, we need to understand the basics and take a second to learn what SPY-6 is and how it operates. We've all heard the term radar. It's a detection system that uses radio waves to determine both the distance and the speed of an object. They're used every day in the world around us to track things like aircraft, ships, weather, and terrain. And when it comes to the military, a radar's most important function is the ability to identify enemy threats. What Raytheon is manufacturing here in their Andover facility is the next generation of radars. In fact, it's the most advanced radar technology in production today, and it goes by the name SPY-6. The SPY-6 technology drastically increases the Navy's air and missile defense capabilities. In today's contested environment, having a radar that can see through all the clutter and detect targets at greater distances and faster speeds is vital. Now, what's so fascinating about SPY-6 is that it's not just a single radar. It's actually a family of radars that will be installed on nearly 50 U.S. Navy ships over the next 10 years. It's also the Navy's first scalable radar, and due to its modular design, comprised of these cube-like building blocks called RMAs, or Radar Modular Assemblies, SPY-6 technology can be configured to fit seven different classes of ships, depending on their specific size requirements. Raytheon has invested over $500 million in infrastructure and enhancements to this facility alone. And what's most impressive is how they've streamlined the building and testing process to meet such a high rate of production. Learning about new technology has always interested me, but getting a behind the scenes look at how that technology is made is almost more interesting. And that right there is what I'm excited to show you guys here today. Sam, welcome to Spy 6 Radar Development Facility. Thank you so much. You know, I've been to several large-scale production facilities, and everyone is different, including this one. Yeah. So first question I have for you is, how is this facility specifically designed to operate? Andover is a very unique facility. One is it's 1.7 million square feet. Two, it's got 4,700 employees that are in the facility to be able to help in any area that we can build. Lastly, it's vertically integrated, which means that we're able to get hardware moved through the factory as quickly as possible. Now, talking about SPY-6 in particular, I know it's gonna drastically increase the Navy's capabilities, but I'm curious, from your perspective, what are those capabilities and improvements we're gonna see from SPY-6? Yeah, we'll start with the performance of the radar. The range that it can see is like nothing they've ever built in history. Two is it's got common software, common training, common logistics. Another big thing for the Navy, so that cuts down on the total cost of being able to operate the radar. And lastly, it's modular. So there's four variants today that the Navy builds, but the capabilities that can go in the future, we can make it bigger, smaller, depending on what the customer wants. You know, when you talk about modularity, it kind of reminds me of the way people are designing homes and office spaces. So for example, I just bought like a modular couch so I can custom design it to fit any space. Silly example, but it's what you guys actually did here with Spy6. Absolutely, Sam. Matter of fact, we built a 3D immersive design center just for that reason. And that allows us to bring our designs to life virtually prior to ever, us ever building a piece of hardware. Matter of fact, we got a demo set up for you today and I think you'll find it really cool. You wanna head that way? Let's do it. Let's do it, man. So Sam, here we are, we're in our 3D immersive design center. We're able to virtually lay out uh, our different designs of products. 
So here we have our radar development facility and that was designed and built using the technology here we have here in the Immersive Design Center. We started with our 2D AutoCAD drawing, but then we virtually built up the space. So that gave our teams an opportunity to walk through a virtual environment before we actually wow. built the building. Once we did build the building, you'll see here we did a 3D laser scan. So this gives us the exact as-built data. So now we know exactly where every beam and column went in. We can get that against our 2D drawing. But then the most important part, we put back in our virtual equipment. So we've got all our 3D models here of our uh, robots, our equipment, the SPY-6 arrays are here. And that way we can make sure everything is gonna fit just as we planned. After getting an up-close look at the Immersive Design Center, it was now time to head back to the factory floor to see more of what it takes to build the SPY-6. But on my way there, I did stumble across something that I definitely wanted to show you. In 1945, a Raytheon engineer by the name of Percy Spencer was working on a military-grade vacuum called a magnetron, when all of a sudden he noticed that the peanut cluster snack bar in his pocket had melted. Now, Percy decided to try another experiment, this time placing popcorn kernels near the magnetron. And to his surprise, he noticed the kernels had popped into a fluffy popcorn. Well, fast forward over 70 years later, Percy's invention can now be found in 90% of American households. And it goes by the name, the microwave. In fact, right behind me is one of the original microwaves that Raytheon filed a patent for back in 1945. Now, what if I told you that the same principles that allow a microwave to heat up your food also allows a radar to function? Microwaves are high-frequency radio waves, and radars work by sending out high-frequency microwaves to see what they bounce off of and how quickly they bounce back. It's crazy to think that the same device we've all used before originated looking like this, and even crazier to think that without the microwave, there is no radar. Now, heading back on the factory floor, it's time that I showed you the subassembly. You've seen what the outside of SPY-6 looks like, however, these long corridors are what divides the areas where the guts of the radar is assembled. Remember those cube-like building blocks we talked about earlier? Well, integrated into each one is a self-contained radar antenna. And to make all that work and come together, well, there's a lot going on. Now we're entering one of our three sub-assembly areas where we really produce the brains of the trim, which is our Transmit Receive Integrated Microwave Module. In circuit card assembly area, we do 250,000 cards a year, over seven surface mount technology lines. This equipment that we're looking at right now hand, uh, automatically places all of these components on our circuit cards. And specific to SPY-6, we do 250 of two different types of cards per week, so 1,000, 2,000 trims a month uh, to support our customer needs down the line. Now we're walking to another sub-assembly area, which is our RF factory. Here we produce RF heads, which are go into the trim assembly. Uh, we can't go in here, unfortunately, because it's a class A clean room. Clean room meaning like someone like me can't go in, or just the whole facility has to be scrubbed, no FOD or anything? No FOD, so okay. we try to keep all our foreign object degree out of these cards. Gotcha. We do some more finite component placement in addition to wire and ribbon bonding before these go down the hall into the next step into the trim. So this is the last stop on the trim assembly line. This is a automation system that we've developed and brought in to help us assemble the trim. So this machine behind us puts in 90 different screws, does all the torquing, and also solders 300 solder joints for us. And at the rate that we build these at 250 a week, and they weigh about 15 pounds a piece, this really helps us ergonomically and meet all of our production needs. After the work is done here in the sub-assembly areas, everything gets sent off to the radar development facility where we started this video. You can think of this area as the end of the manufacturing line, where all the pieces of SPY-6 come together. Welcome to the radar development facility. This is where it all comes together. As you can see, you've got multiple variants being built in here. You've got automation with a robot. You've got a skilled workforce all in one location. And it looks like right here, we actually have a completed SPY-6. I assume this is one of the larger configurations. This is, this is the 37 RMA or radar module assemblies. This is going on all the Flight 3 ships going forward. And then over there, that's one of the smaller rotating ones, right? That's right, that's a nine RMA configuration and that's going on the Amphibs class. This is going to LPD-29. In this large yellow frame, I assume that's not going on the ship right? Is that just used to transport? It's just a transport fixture. So we have to have a way to be able to lift it up and put it onto a tractor trailer when it goes to leave. And that's what that's for. 
So I know you mentioned robots, yeah. and right now I'm looking at this massive one. What exactly is it doing? This is the Spy 6 robot. Okay. You see those gray panels up there? Yes. They're called radiators. Okay. Because the precision that it takes to install them, we are using a robot versus having our skilled workforce do it. The other thing this robot does is it also installs the chassis on the back side of the radar because those chassis are so heavy as a two-man lift. So avoiding somebody getting hurt in the workforce, this allows us to use the robot to do that installation, which is highly precise. Oh my gosh. What are we looking at right now? Welcome to the Nearfield Range. You know out there, we were just talking about how we build up the radar. Yeah. Well, this is how we test the radar. So this is at where the radar gets tested with the latest tactical software. Why is that important? Because the Navy knows it works when it leaves here. It's got a large 60 by 40 scanner that moves up and down and across, back and forth to be able to test each individual RMA at a time. I think this is probably the coolest room I've ever been in. And I'm curious, all this blue foam on the walls, acoustic paneling, what is it? Yeah, it's anechoic chamber foam. Okay. What that does is it absorbs RF energy, so that way we don't get reflections back on the radar. And so is this it? Is this the final step or uh, what's after this room? Not quite yet. Okay. So after we're done with test, that's when we're gonna move it back out and we're gonna move into sail, pack and ship. Gets on a tractor trailer, goes to a shipyard, and then it gets installed on the ship. It's over to the Navy then, huh? Yeah. Wow. Now, out of everything we've seen today, I think what excites me the most is that Spy 6 isn't just a prototype or a concept. It's the real deal. In fact, it's already being installed on Navy ships as we speak. Right now is just the beginning of what will be a complete overhaul and radar capability for the Navy fleet. And I know I'm excited to follow along with that journey over the coming years. If you haven't already, make sure to click the link in the description below and sign up for my flyby newsletter where you can stay up to speed on everything innovation and defense. That's it from here at Raytheon's Radar Development Facility. I hope you learned something new, and I'll catch you next time.